I'm back. Back and ready. When it comes to the microbiome, there's a convincing but misleading narrative that your microbiome is your friend and you need to feed it to be happy. Eat no fat and eat no lean. Eat red beans fit for a queen. But as is often the case, this narrative is based on many half-truths and also some ignored facts. Recently a study came out that found the surprising result that fiddling with the microbiome to produce more short-chain fatty acids worsened the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in mice. A lot of people were shocked, including the authors, but if you have looked into the research you should already know what the issue was, propionic acid. In mice, propionic acid has long been known to cause autism-like symptoms. It's also long been known that autism is closely linked to gut disturbances and vitamin deficiency. So what's going on here? In short, your gut microbiome is trying to kill you. While we hear a fairy tale that your microbiome is full of cuddly buddies that ferment our food to provide more nutrition, the truth is our colons and appendix are very small compared to other species. And when fermentation occurs in the longer small intestine, it's invariably bad for our health. The main reason that bacteria like L. rutiri are considered good is because they actually kill off the other guys and keep your small intestine relatively clear. Make no mistake though, any bacteria that makes it into the bloodstream from the gut is bad news, and this is a big part of why we age. In time, the immune system which should be repairing age-related damage winds up spending all of its time fighting off these intruders. The reason propionic acid is bad is that to burn this kind of fatty acid in the mitochondria requires carboxylation. This produces carbon dioxide and also requires vitamins like B7, B12, or K2 depending on the circumstance. So if you're deficient in these vitamins, like many people today, then this could cause some problems that are even worse. And even if you're not deficient, producing a bunch of extra oxidative stress in the brain is the last thing on earth that you want. Yeah, you know, because everyone's got a brain. Or almost everyone. It can also zoom right through the blood-brain barrier and right into the mitochondria. Well, this is a good thing with acetic acid, which is the purest form of fuel the body can use. Fascinating. Pure energy. It presents a real problem with this more complex molecule that has many little understood effects in the body. The bacteria that produce this are also the same ones that cause acne, and the same ones that make your sweat stink. They also release inflammatory agents and are even believed to produce agents that thin and damage the skin. Essentially, these are pathogenic parasites that literally try to eat you and cause lots of inflammation in the process. And they are just one of many problematic players in your microbiome. Well, it sounds great that nourishing the microbiome with fiber will make us healthier, and I see these claims every single day. It's very easy to disprove this. When you supplement fiber powder alone as an additive to the diet and don't change anything else, the data speaks for itself. It does nothing at all for health. All these claims are based on comparisons between eating foods with lots of fiber like beans compared to diets with lots of refined carbs. Obviously this is going to be the case because it makes carb digestion slower. In fact, you won't even digest foods like beans completely. So these isochloric diets showing benefits are not even really isochloric at all. So what's the real solution? As usual, it's avoiding garbage foods 
to stop being fat phobic, at least when it comes to animal fat, and especially in this case in particular, exercise. Dude, we've been through this, okay? I'm cultivating mass. Stop saying that. You are not cultivating mass. And if you are, stop cultivating and start harvesting. Bro, check this out. Now try to move me. Well, I'm not gonna try. Try to move me, bro. Exercise is very important because it triggers the gut to push food through the body and also expel these harmful gut bacteria, like the ones that produce propionic acid. It's been noted many times that people in shape have healthy gut bacteria. Generally, they attempt to ascribe being in shape to the bacteria, but most likely the exercise itself is what causes the healthy bacteria, not the other way around. Bacteria don't want to be expelled and will stop up the system if you let them. Processed foods like sugar and bread are well known to cause SIBO over time and this slows down gut motility and causes many problems. SIBO is an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine, which is supposed to be relatively free of bacteria while it is considered normal or even beneficial to have bacteria fermenting food in the colon. While fat slows down digestion, paradoxically it also is something that can't be used by bacteria to reproduce. Interestingly, bacteria like L. Ruturi actually do use fat not to reproduce but to produce biocides. This keeps down the growth of other bacteria in the small gut. So the more animal fat you eat and the fewer carbs, the more it will tend to choke out the more pathogenic forms of bacteria, like those that produce propionic acid from starch and sugar, and which also cause a great deal of inflammation and in wear the gut lining out. There is an exception here though, and that's the dreaded trans fats. These are villainized for a good reason, and one of the things they can do is damage the gut lining which leads to leaky gut. Elatic acid is one of these trans fats, and it can be produced in the gut itself while eating a high fat diet, as they call it. Which is really a high fat plus high sugar diet or high starch diet. However, this is not produced from saturated fats, but from PUFAs, and the bacteria in question are associated with a high-carb diet. So if you eat healthy animal fats and moderate carbs, you're simply not going to have this issue, just like you simply aren't going to have almost every chronic health issue. While they are often villainized, lately TMAOs from Well Done Meat have also been found to be oncoprotective. And not only that, but helpful in establishing a healthy gut. And of course, the best way to kill off these pests is through some fasting. In general, fasting is very healthy for your gut. The bacteria that reproduce quickly and require lots of simple carbs are the most pathogenic ones, like these ones that produce propionic acid, but they're also the ones that die off very quickly. The ones like El Ruturi live a lot longer because when you fast, they just eat the bad guys. The effect of fasting on the gut is a question I get all the time, and I'm happy to say it's very positive. Just make sure to refeed on foods that will build up the gut and discourage pathogenic gut bacteria. That means things like bone broth to build the gut lining back up, fatty meat, and taurine-rich seafood. Taurine and glycine are crucial to the gut, and I have noticed improvements in mine since I upped my taurine dose to 3 grams a day. Now you may have been surprised by some of my advice, but information we rely on today only gets more suspect as time goes by. Remember, no one was eating a low-fat, healthy whole grain diet thousands of years ago. And certainly not a diet of exotic fruits and vegetables shipped from around the world. That was only possible in recent times with globalization. We ate lots of animal fat and lots of the whole animal, especially the bits full of glycine and taurine that most people just throw out today. 
Yet somehow we were healthy and almost totally free of many diseases stemming from the gut, such as asthma. Your body can eat all kinds of things, but trying to ferment large amounts of complex carbs or having a diet that consists mostly of carbs simply doesn't work in the human body. Oh, there's a dots and dozy dots and little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? Now, if the words sound queer and funny to your ear, a little bit tumble and jivey, say mares eat oats and does eat oats and little lambs eat ivy.